Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to teach you how you can replicate a Polaroid effect in Adobe Lightroom. I'm going to be leaving links to everything you need for this video so you guys can check the description after this video. I'm using Lightroom for this tutorial but you can actually use the mobile app if you don't have the PC or Mac version. It's completely free and it has the same exact features and you can follow along with this tutorial no problem. I'm also going to be releasing a free preset whatever the final product is going to be. I'm going to be releasing this for mobile and desktop so you guys can check the description for that as well. I'll also leave a link to a video on how to import the presets on mobile. And yeah, if you guys enjoy this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. And with that being said, let's get straight into it. So right here, I got a photo, a very weird photo. Um, there's just cereal in the background, but uh, basically I'm going to be using this iPhone photo and applying this effect. So with a Polaroid, it has some characteristics that other photos don't have. For one, it has a vignette around the side. The side sort of gets faded into darkness or light. Sometimes it has like a white edge or a black edge, depends on the photo. There's also a flash being used on a Polaroid camera and typically the middle of the photo is brighter than the rest. There's also a lot of contrast in the photo because of the flash. Like I mentioned before, the edge of the photo typically turns darker while the middle of the photo is super, super bright. Also, skin tones are sort of messed up with Polaroids because of the flash. So the face right here is very, very flat, but at the end of this video, it's going to be a lot brighter. So yeah, let's just get straight into it. I'm going to be doing the lighting first and then the temperature and stuff later because I think the lighting is more important than the actual colors for the specific effect. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna adjust the contrast. Like I mentioned before, there's gonna be a lot of contrast because there's white in the middle. So I'm gonna increase the contrast. We're gonna be increasing the highlights. Like I mentioned before, you want the whites in the middle. And we're basically gonna do the opposite for the darker color. So shadow's gonna be down, then the white's gonna be up, and then the black's gonna be down. The only problem right here is the face sorta is messed up. So we might have to increase the shadows a little bit just so you can see the face, but you wanna keep the black part down. If you can see the subject's face in your photo, then uh, just turn it down, but not too much where it's sort of invisible. You can also slightly increase the exposure so everything's brightened up. Um, for the texture, you wanna increase it a lot just because when you actually scan a Polaroid, what you'll notice is it captures a lot of texture. It captures dust and stuff like that, or even if you're just taking a picture of it. Um, so you wanna increase the texture a bunch the clarity, you actually want to turn it down because typically Polaroids are very soft. And the reason they're soft is because you can't really capture a lot of detail on a Polaroid just because the image size is so, so small. And if you're taking a picture or scanning it, it doesn't capture a lot of detail that way. So you want to decrease it a bunch. Not too much where it doesn't actually look like a face or it looks fake, but just a little bit. You can also adjust the dehazing. I think this actually helps a lot with applying the effect. You can see here. Everything's sort of more faded, which I actually like better than increasing it. So I'm going to decrease it a little bit. Next is tone curves. So with Polaroids, the whole photo is essentially faded a little bit, even though it does have contrast. So I'm going to increase the contrast a little bit. And I'm going to slightly offset it by lifting this point up. So you can see all the shadows um, get increased a little bit. So we're going to do that a little bit. I'm going to press in the middle to make another point. I'm going to move slightly down and then and then for the top point we want to move it down as well so basically this um, lowers the brightness of the highlights so if we see before and after right now there's a big big difference there's a lot more contrast it's a lot brighter uh, which is exactly what we want so like I mentioned before the skin tones are gonna to be messed up they're gonna be super super bright um, so I'm going to increase the luminance of orange and yellow. I've just noticed when I take pictures on Polaroid cameras of literally anybody, it doesn't matter if they're a darker skin color or if they're a brighter skin color, the skin tones are messed up. I'd also decrease the skin tone colors like orange and yellow um, in the saturation tab as well. We're going to actually be adding some colors with split toning. So we're going to select a yellowish color for the highlights. Um, and then you can choose the balance of it. I'm going to turn it more to the right side and then you can adjust the shadows. Typically I want like a blue. So this one, like this type of color. 
You can actually go with even a green. I know like disposable cameras typically have a green shadow. Um, to, so if you want to sort of make it look more like a disposable camera than a Polaroid camera, you can do that as well. So for this, I'm actually going to do that. I think it looks a bit better. I'm also going to turn the shadows down a little bit and maybe increase the exposure more. I like how it looks better that way. And of course, you can increase the saturation of the shadows. So I'm going to make it 36. So here's a before and after right now. You might also want to crop in if it's a little bit too zoomed out just because Polaroid cameras are typically zoomed in a little bit. You can't really take a picture from far away with a Polaroid camera or else the photo gets very, very, very faded. So I might want to crop in. Also, the aspect ratio might be four by five. I'm not too sure. Uh, but if you want to post this on Instagram, this is the aspect ratio you want anyways. So right here, I got that. So right here, I'm going to move it a little bit down and crop it. I forgot to mention about vibrance and saturation. We want to increase the vibrance and decrease the saturation a little bit. I'm also going to add the faded film look a little bit more so you can see the hair changes a little bit. Just slightly higher than it was before. We're going to increase the sharpening a bunch just because when you take a picture or scan a Polaroid, you'll notice there's a loss in detail and it actually takes a picture of the texture a lot more than the actual photo sometimes. So next we're going to distort the image a bit because of the nature of a Polaroid. It typically gets a little bit bent. And so the middle is sort of distorted a little bit and the edges are curved. So you can increase this more depending on what type of effect or how strong the effect you want. So I'm going to do it like that. And one of the last things we're going to do is add vignetting. So typically there's going to be a dark vignette. Sometimes there's a bright one actually. But like I mentioned before, typically the edges are darker and the middle is brighter because of the flash. I'm going to change um, the shadow color. It doesn't look that good right now. I'm going to find a color that works. So I might go back to like the blue or maybe a brownish color, brownish reddish color. For this photo, it might be different than yours because the whole photo is sort of red. Um, so you won't really see the effects of this. But on other photos, you might. Um, and lastly, I think the final thing we're going to do is we're going to add some grain. And it's going to be very, very chunky grain. So we're going to increase the size. So if we see it before and after, it's a lot, lot different. I'm just going to adjust some of the curves to ensure that the middle pops out a little bit more. So what you could do is you could make an S curve. So an S curve is when you have like, I think four points and you sort of just create an S shape, obviously not too extreme. And I would lift up this as well. So right now it's a little bit too bright. You can see the contrast. You can see the saturation is also a little bit too much. So we'll decrease it a bit. But this is essentially what I want. So you can see the white pops out in the middle and the outsides are dark. And so if you're wondering how the hell do I add a frame, like the Polaroid frame, you can actually just search it up. You want to make sure there's PNG after it. So let's just say we use any of these. We would want to save it and import it into like a Photoshop or another program or something like that. I have a tutorial on how to do this on your phone. So if you guys want to check that in the description, you can do that literally any photo editor that allows you to place a photo over another. I'm going to be using Photoshop real quick for this. So I'm going to right click export and then just export it and import it into Photoshop real quick. So I'm going to import the image right now and you can also add dust textures and stuff like that. Um, if you choose to, you don't want it to be too, too strong. So I'm going to like choose this one or something. This is very subtle. I would also search maybe dust scratches. I think I spelled it wrong. Yeah. So like something like this. So I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. So control V I'm going to press control T to transform it and right click and just rotate it. So you want to go into the screen option. I don't really like how this dust looks like, but you can actually barely see this dust, but I guess that's fine. Um, and now we're going to add the Polaroid frame. So we're going to search up maybe overlay. You can see that the dimensions of these are very, very small. So what we can go and do is press on tools, press on size and make it large so that we only have high resolution ones. 
This one's actually transparent, which is perfect. So we're just going to import it here. So the dimensions are almost exact. And we're going to press Control T to resize this image. And we're just going to make sure it fits. I think this is a square, actually. So um, when you're editing the photo, just make sure it's a square. So there you go. That's how you do it. But once again, you guys could check the description if you want to know how to do this on your phone in terms of the frame stuff. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you want more videos like this. I'll also leave a playlist to similar videos like this if you guys want to watch those. My name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.